Amen. All hail King Jesus. Good evening. I'm Pastor Nick, the music pastor here at Berean Bible Church, and uh, thank you for coming to our coming to our program. The kingdom is coming. In it, we attempt to sing and play and present to you the gospel of Jesus and his kingdom that he preached while he was on earth. Now, this show is a little bit different than norm- the shows we've had in the past. For one, it's a little bit longer because I wrote it, so with everything I do goes longer for whatever reason. And so uh, because of that, we do have an intermission. So uh, about two-thirds of the way through, there will be an intermission for about 15 minutes. So you can watch out for that. If this is your first time here at Berean, thank you for coming. If you need to know where the restrooms are, you can see that back door right there with the exit sign right over top of it. From there, you'll be able to find it, I'm sure. We're going to pray before we begin as we commit this night to the Lord. Father in heaven, in your gospels you have shown us your kingdom. We've also seen how we don't deserve it. We can never make it there on our own. So tonight, would you encourage those who believe in you and convince those who have not yet believed in you the necessity of giving our lives over to you? dying on the cross, rising again, giving salvation so free to us. Be with all the actors and the singers tonight. We don't mean to impress anyone, but simply present the truth that you presented to us 2,000 years ago. In Jesus' name, amen. In every age, in every territory, in every language, in all peoples, in every heart, in every soul, in every mind, in all consciousness, in every family, in every home, in every community, in all relationships. With every victory, with every loss, with every failure, with all success. With every injustice, with every death, with every act of human triumph, without fail. Every moment of our time on this side of eternity leaves no one satisfied, but only hungering for more. Some attempt to sail the river of discontent by by fabricating rafts of hollow wood, hoping Their sheer determination will be enough to keep them afloat amidst the inevitable destruction. They may survive the waves, but then they will face a new enemy in the sun, scorching whatever may be exposed by the pride in their hearts. No matter what the world of men thinks they have accomplished, the lone observer knows that there is always more evil just around the corner. Every rock, every crevice, every shadow hides a new and yet remarkably recognizable filth that you both wishes were eradicated and yet resurrects to life again and again. Who will free us from this earthly body of death? Praise be to God for our Lord, Jesus Christ. You may have heard of this, Jesus. You know the stories. 
He raised the dead, healed the sick, reached out to tax collectors and harlots, heralded a message of love for the world. You may assume that these messages were blueprints for a reformed planet, that if we simply followed in his wisdom, that our systems, well, they could be salvaged. I'm here to tell you, his message is not so simple. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, and his kingdom is not of this world. Indeed, it demanded the passing away of this current one. His message is the story of all time. And as for any story, we will start at the beginning. Would grieve his 
Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their host. By the seventh day, God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Certainly, and without doubt, God's creation was completed, perfected, and delightful. His vision of a universe conceived in eternity past had now erupted into a flowing symphony of living beasts, rolling hills, endless sea, and of course, the crown jewel of creation, mankind, made in his own image. The man was placed in a garden with full dominion over every kind of animal and seed. But that was not enough for man. Instead, he chose disobedience, which hurled mankind, along with the rest of creation, into a bottomless abyss of wickedness, which resulted in the destruction of the earth by deluge. But at just the right time, the Lord Almighty chose for himself a people to be his children and priesthood on earth. This nation, Israel, would see deliverance after deliverance as their Lord, Jehovah, Adonai, continually rescued them from their enemies. God himself even promised never to remove the kingdom from their great king, David. As spoken to Nathan, to David by the prophet Nathan. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall be a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will correct him with a rod of men and the strokes of the sons of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. 2 Samuel 7, 12 to 16. This was truly the kingdom of the Lord. And indeed, the Lord fought for Israel. However, their real battle came from within. Their own pride, foolishness, and lack of fear for their Redeemer drove them to unthinkable acts against each other, against even children, and caused them to follow after false gods. Finally, the Lord had had enough of their rebellion and sent them into exile. Every prophet that came before and after dreamed of a coming deliverer. May he come quickly. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, your glory has departed. Oh, Judah. Your people are under affliction. The Lord determined to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He stretched out a line. He has not restrained his hand. They say to their mother. Where is the grain and where is the wine? 
be free like a wounded man in the streets of the city. How shall I admonish you? To what shall I compare you? Oh, daughter, oh, daughter of of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this For you, Bethlehem Ephrata, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. The deliverer had come, not in a palace or in regal majesty 
but in a lowly stable. His father was not a king, but a carpenter. And his mother, not a queen, just a teenage girl, yet highly favored among women. The child continued to grow and became strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2.40 When the time had come for Jesus' public ministry, he demonstrated his authority in the world, which had been given to him by his Father, as he healed the sick and loved the sinners. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Luke 14, 18. Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, there are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox 
or his donkey from the manger, and leadeth the way to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him. Say to daughter Zion, your Redeemer comes. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. demonstrated such power and authority over individuals and their circumstances that eventually it became expected of him. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. John 21, 25. His own disciples witnessed his power firsthand on many occasions. But once in a while, they were able to observe marvels that no one else was permitted to see. Trust the God that 
those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters. They have seen the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he spoke and raised the stormy wind, which lifted the waves of the sea. They rose up to the heavens. They went down to the depths. Their soul melted away in their misery. They reeled and staggered like a drunken person and were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distresses. He caused the storm to be still so that the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they were quiet. So he guided them to their desired harbor. They shall give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and for his wonders to the sons of mankind. They shall also exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him at the seat of the elders. They came to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him, and he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him any more, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. Mark 5, 1 to 5. Hasn't always been this way 
And I remember brighter days Before the dark ones came And stole my mind And wrapped my soul in chains And now I live among the dead and Fighting voices in my head Hoping someone hears me Crying in the night And carries me away Set me free of the chains of the earth. Say, I'm the hearing me. Set me free. Finds me crying in the rain All alone with my demons I am Who is this man that comes my way The dark ones shriek, they scream his name Is this one they say will set the camps free Oh, Jesus, rescue me, set me free. Oh, the As Jesus commanded, even the demons to flee. The darkness of their inhabitants gave evidence of a world that was more abysmal than any simple human mind could imagine. And as Jesus began to preach his gospel to a nation unrepentant, he warned them of the truth of hell. Fires feast. I had 
had it all He had nothing My belly full Yes, we will all night With one word My servants tend to me And in loneliness He shook it and cried And if only I had known him Maybe things would be different now Two men, two destinies One in song and one in peace Too late to rescue me Now on my soul the fire's peace Then came the day that comes for every man it doesn't care if you're rich or poor He was carried to be with Abraham But I was buried not knowing what's in store and If only I had known him Maybe things would be different now Two men, two destinies, one in storm and one in peace. Too late to rescue me, now on my soul the fire's peace. Now in hell I lift my eyes, I see him fall. Jesus' ministry, he shared the truth in love. He made no allowance for sin, but gave every opportunity for repentance. His charity was that of the Father. He reached into the depths of the pools of human depravity and stretched out a loving hand. Luke 19.10 
for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was preaching the gospel of his kingdom to all Israel and pleading for their citizenship. His promise was that the kingdom was indeed coming and they were both invited and expected to come in. If not, destruction was inevitable.
We hope you've enjoyed the first portion of our cantata tonight. At this time, we will entertain a short intermission, and we will be back in 15 minutes. <laughs>